Crossroads kids, it's Jacqueline here. Welcome back to Church Online. We're gonna kick off today with the game. My friends in kids ministry sent me a few photos of people that they follow, whether it's on YouTube or on TV or other social media. So I'm going to go through each picture right here on my phone and I have to guess who these people are. You guys play along with me. All right, so you guys should be able to see my screen right here. Let's go through the first picture. Oh. I feel like I know who this girl is. She loves slime. I think she has her own slime line. Um, you guys probably have watched some of her slime videos to learn how to make slime. I think it's Karina Garcia. I think that's her name. She has her own slime line, but I got that one, I think. All right, let's move on to the next one. Oh, okay, I see a picture of five guys. Y'all look like dads. Um, these guys, the picture should be right here anyway. But I think they're the ones who do like those trick shots. Like I'm looking at my, your right, right, the camera guy. You right, right, the camera guy. And I'm trying to get confirmation from him. But I think it's Dude Perfect, right? I see the little hat that says DP. They're the ones who like do all the trick shots and stuff. So I think I got that one too. All right, let's move to the next one. Okay, this guy has an orange hat. It's orange and blue. He's got orange glasses. He's got an orange bow tie. Um, I feel like, I feel like I've seen him before. He plays music, I think, and really fun songs. I think his name starts with a B. If you know who it is, shout it out right now. I think it's, I think it's like Blippy or something. I think his name is Blippy. If it is Blippy, give us a thumbs up on this video because I think I'm right. I think I know who this is. All right, just a few more here. Oh my gosh. You all should know who this is. They are some of my favorite people in the world. We've got Steve McKinley and Sawyer McKenzie, our junior high and high school pastors. They are the best. Their content on YouTube and Instagram is awesome. Um, and they are just hilarious. They're just great guys. All right, moving on. Okay, this kid has like a million Legos in the back. He's got a Spider-Man thing on the side. A bit is, oh, that's not a baby Yoda. That's regular Yoda. Um, he's got a bunch of toys in here, so I'm guessing it's a kid who reviews toys. He looks very young, but he looks like he loves toys and he's got a lot of them. So I don't know who this is. Let me know who this is in life group time. All right, here's our last one. Oh my gosh, I know this girl. She's got a giant cookie right here and it's got glasses. It's so cute. She's great at baking and her name is Rosanna Pansino. I know her, I know her, she is great. Um, I don't know how well I did on this. I mean, you guys sent me these pictures and sent me these names. So I think I got some of them. I'm looking at you, Ryan, for confirmation. I got some of them, not all of them, but that was fun. Well, I didn't get them all right. You all probably recognize more of them than me. I'm sure there are so many more YouTubers, athletes, singers, bands, and celebrities that you follow and keep up with and know all about. But did you ever stop to think about what it really means to follow someone? Not just like in Simon Says. All right, you're right, right, the camera guy. What does Simon say? Okay, so Simon Says, do 10 jumping jacks. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Done. Not just like following them on Instagram. Pastor Chuck, how wasn't I already following Pastor Chuck? There we go. And not just like subscribing to them on YouTube. Here's our kids' YouTube channel. I hope y'all are subscribed to this. So easy but what it really means to follow them. Today, we're gonna to talk about what it means to follow Jesus, why it's important, and how we can do it. One of the best ways we can learn this is to open our Bibles and read about the first followers of Jesus, the disciples. Right now, grab your Bibles or open up your Bible apps to the book of Luke. This is the third book in the New Testament. In just a second, we'll start reading in chapter nine, verses 51 through 53. Jesus enjoyed spending time with his disciples. While he got to know them and become friends with them, a big part of his relationship and friendship with them was teaching. Jesus gave them important instructions on how to tell people about God, especially after Jesus would be taken back up to heaven. 
All right, let's read verses 51 through 53 together. The time grew near for Jesus to be taken up to heaven. So he made up his mind to go to Jerusalem. He sent messengers on ahead. They went into a Samaritan village to get things ready for him. But the people there did not welcome Jesus. That was because he was heading for Jerusalem. Jesus and the disciples were traveling, but the place they were going to did not welcome them. Can you imagine going on a trip somewhere, traveling a long way with your family and friends, only to get to the entrance and be denied? It reminds me of one hot summer day, kind of like the ones we're in right now. But my friends and I were driving to a water park all the way in San Dimas, which is only about 30 minutes from here in Corona. But because it was so hot, so many people had the same idea to visit this water park. So many people that the car line to the parking lot entrance took us 45 minutes to get in. Here are my friends and I, so excited to finally be parking, getting out of the car to put sunscreen on and enjoy a fun day on a bunch of water slides. We have all our tickets. All we have to do is pay $10 for parking to get in. And get this, when we got to the little booth where they take payment for parking, they said it was cash only. We only had our debit cards, no cash, not even a $5 bill. The person at the window couldn't let us in. They needed $10 in cash. And because we didn't have that, we weren't welcomed in. We had to turn around, find an ATM to withdraw cash from, and then come back and wait in line again for 45 minutes. It was so frustrating. Now let's bring it back to the situation that Jesus and the disciples were in when they weren't welcomed into the Samaritan village. Think about how they felt when they were told they could not visit or stay, just like us when we were going to this water park. In Luke chapter nine, verse 54, we see that the disciples were very set. Read here. The disciples, James and John saw this. They asked, Lord, do you want us to call down fire from heaven to destroy them? But Jesus turned and commanded them not to do it. Then Jesus and his disciples went on to another village. Obviously, James and John were really angry that this city wouldn't allow Jesus in. They loved Jesus. They were willing to follow him anywhere and also stand up for him. But they sometimes got so excited about the idea of following Jesus that they didn't always realize what it really meant to follow him. Just like when you get a brand new board game or video game, right? Everyone gets so excited about having a new game and wanting to play it that we often skip reading the instructions or doing the tutorial and following the directions. I mean, who wants to spend five minutes going through the tutorial? In the verses we just read, Jesus was rejected. The disciples were really angry, so much so that they wanted to approach things with violence. But Jesus wanted the disciples to understand that they would have to make sacrifices too. This idea of sacrifice means that we must be willing to leave behind other things. In this situation, it looked like putting aside their anger, responding with kindness, and just moving along. But what does sacrifice look like in our lives as first through fifth graders? Think about this example. Let's say your best friends invited you to a Zoom game night on Friday night. You haven't seen them in a while and they're planning to play Pictionary, Battleship, and do a scavenger hunt. It sounds so fun, but then you remember that it's your mom's birthday that day, and her birthday wish is for you and your siblings to cook dinner for her and eat together as a family. You would have to pick the activity that is most important to you and sacrifice or let go of the other activity. Same thing in our relationship with Jesus. If we have asked Jesus to be our forever friend and asked him to be in our lives, we shouldn't put anything before him. We must be willing to make sacrifices in order to follow him. Check out this verse in Matthew chapter 16. It says, Then Jesus spoke to his disciples. He said, Whoever wants to be my disciple must say no to themselves. They must pick up their cross and follow me. In order to be a disciple or a follower of Jesus, we must say no to ourselves. 
Not like standing in front of a mirror and saying no to ourselves. That's just weird. In this verse, Jesus is telling us that we must say no to some of the things in ourselves that distract us from following Jesus and learning more about Him. Here are a couple of things that distract us from being more like Jesus. Number one, spending three hours playing Mario Kart instead of opening up our Bible to read for 10 minutes. Or number two, watching five YouTube videos from our favorite channel in a row and not taking five minutes to pray. Now, don't get me wrong, doing things that we enjoy and that are fun are not bad, but it's when we get so caught up with those things and let them get in the way of following Jesus, that's when we need to realize what's more important. Following Jesus means three things. If you bring anything and learn anything from this video today, following Jesus means three things. Number one, reading God's word. That's the Bible. Number two, understanding what it says. And number three, following God's directions daily. Raise your hand if you have ever been hiking. How do you know where to go? We use a compass or a map, right? These things help us find our way. In the same way, the Bible is God's word and it tells us what Jesus did and said and what God says. If we keep our hearts focused on that, it will guide us to follow Jesus the way that he wants us to. One last verse I'll leave you with today is Psalm 119 verse 105. It says, your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. If we allow God's word to be a lamp for our feet, we allow God to show us the way we should go, and that is following in the steps of His Son, Jesus. Not just like we're playing Simon Says or hitting a follow or subscribe button, but really following Jesus and learning from His ways. So, what will you say no to this week in order to put Jesus first? Maybe it's making sure to read your Bible and pray first before connecting with a friend online. Or maybe it's obeying your mom and dad before doing what you wanna do. Also, what can you read in the Bible that is really fun to get to know Jesus better? One of my favorite books is John, especially chapter 15. The words written there come straight from Jesus and how we can learn to love more like him and be connected with him. Let us pray together right now. Lord, thank you so much for giving us the Bible and that we can believe and know that it is your word and it was inspired by you. Thank you that it teaches us that we can follow Jesus um, and gives us practical ways to do that, like reading your word, praying to you, um, and loving more like you, Lord. So thank you and I pray that this week, every kid watching this video will be able to say no to things that will distract them from following you. So Lord, continually teach us to become more like you. We love you and it's in your name that we pray, amen. All right, everybody, be sure to tune back into our YouTube channel for Littles Live and Boredom Busters and join us on Sundays for our virtual life groups. We now have them for kids age four all the way to fifth grade. So enjoy your life group time with your leaders. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.